All right, guys, Everton and Tottenham have just played out a 1-1 draw and it was a gripping game. I mean, you couldn't really take your eyes off it. And yeah, we'll, we'll just uh, get break it down and go through it. So to start off with uh, Ever Everton, I thought in the first half, their game plan went quite well. Um, they, they managed to get Tottenham to force the ball out wide rather than getting into good goal scoring positions where, where they can create uh, chances which which will um, you know put Harry Kane and Hyung Min Son in the best position to score goals and I, th I think that there were also a few occasions where Tottenham did gain good positions but Everton did manage to limit them and when Tottenham did get in uh, good like positions to score goals, Everton's defenders like Michael Keane, Seamus Coleman, James Tarkovsky all did brilliantly well to, you know, just throw themselves in the way of it or, you know, just do a, an amazing defensive action to stop the ball from going into the net. I think Michael Keane's was probably the pick of the bunch with the... Uh, shot that Harry Kane had early on in the game which he which was clearly going past Jordan Pickford and Keane managed to uh, get his body in the way of it and it, it was a brilliant block and there were a few of these Ben Godfrey as well at the back post uh, stopping Hume Min Son from getting on the end, ed, end of a cross sorry um, so yeah it, it, it was the sort of thing that you expect from a team that's uh, managed by Sean Dyche and there were even a few occasions in the first half where Everton were managing to, you know, cause a few, a few problems at the other end. Not not as many as Tottenham, but the way that Tottenham were trying to get into dangerous positions uh, when they sort of figured out that Everton weren't going to allow them to play through them with like the midfield three that Everton were playing of Anana, Idrissa Gay, and Decore. Tottenham decided, right, we're going to push Pedro Porro and even Perisic right forwards up to the byline and then try and flick it back across goal once there's been like a switch ball almost uh, into the path of like a Harry Kane or a Kulosevsky or Son. And that, that, that brought them a little bit of success, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't enough to win the game in the end. They, they didn't create enough opportunities like that. Although I, th I think it's it's fair to say that this was what uh, earned Tottenham the penalty, a switch ball in the second half where it get, gets headed back across uh, the six yard box. And the, the penalty, it, it comes from a moment of clumsiness from Michael Keane, I think that's fair to say, because it, it's an attempt for the ball where if he makes contact with the ball, He's not really doing a lot because it, he's, it's going to hit his studs and it's going to go to the edge of the box. He's not going to get solid contact on it. And he can see, you can clearly see that from the angle his head's at, he's going to be able to see where Romero is through his peripheral vision. So it, it was a moment of madness a little bit from Michael Keane, but more on him later. And then just before that, that, there was the red card as well. So we'll cover Harry Kane's uh, manic 10 minutes whilst we're at it. Um, so the, the red card, for me, it, it was a, a stupid decision. It, sorry, not by the ref, but by Decore. Um, just just what, why on earth do you do that? Your team are, you know, scrapping out a, a nil-nil draw and try, trying to take something from the game against a team who are challenging for the top four when you're in a relegation battle. The last thing you need to do is put your team down to 10 men by getting yourself sent off. So Harry Kane, I think, is smart enough to know what he's doing here. He, he knows that Decore is a player who, you know, sometimes loses his cool. So but when, he, when he goes into the tackle with, uh, I think it was Damari Gray, he, he goes into Decore a little bit and, you know, let, lets him know he's there. And it, it, it's absolutely stupid from Decore to re reta retaliate like that. Struggle with that word. It's stupid from him to retaliate like that. Just prove I can say it. <laughs> and um, 
it, it, yeah, it earns him a red card and, and rightly so. So, yeah, and that, that put to Everton at an instant disadvantage. And I think without Decore, with, with Decore on the pitch, sorry, maybe they can put a bit more pressure on Tottenham. Because at the start of the second half, Tottenham were really sloppy. In, in fact, throughout the second half, with the ball in the back three in defence, Tottenham were really sloppy on the ball, whether it be Hugo Lloris, Christian Romero, like they, they just couldn't string any passes together. And when Everton were pushing them, squeezing them right into their own penalty area, they were, you know, at risk of losing the ball on any occasion. So th this was a big turning point in the game because it meant that Everton couldn't commit as many men into the, you know, high press as, as they would have wanted to because then Tottenham can just play the ball over the top and then you've got you know Harry Kane to play the ball to the two flyers on, on the wings Kulosevsky and Son and then that, that's going to cause problems so it, that, that definitely affected Everton but Tottenham once they scored the penalty Harry Kane scored it brilliant penalty it's what you expect from him and uh, yeah you know just, just a top class professional it, it, it is all that needs to be said about Harry Kane, to be honest. I think it was his 250th Premier League goal involvement. So, you know, that that's a ridiculous achievement. Uh, there's not many players, I don't think, who have got to that landmark before. So, fair play to him. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that's all I've got to say on that, to be honest. But for, after, after they scored the goal, Tottenham... You'd think, okay, they'll, they'll play this smart now. They'll they'll let Everton maybe come on to them a little bit, a bit continue to get forwards and stop Everton from putting too much pressure on. But instead, they just let Everton take control of the game almost. Maybe not take control because you can't really be in control when you're losing, but like take control of possession and the uh, direction the, the game is going. And it causes Tottenham all sorts of problems and, and they could have conceded in truth a long time before they did but before they did concede there was the Lucas Moura red card which having just come onto the pitch and Lucas Moura bear in mind is a player who's got big points proof uh, to his manager right now or to pretty much all Tottenham fans and everyone at the club because the past 12 months under Antonio Conte haven't gone as he would have wanted. He's no longer really close to uh, a spot in the starting eleven, given the form of Kulisevsky, Son and Kane. I know, I know Son's had a bit of a poor season, but, you know, it's Hyung Min Son we're talking about. He He's going to be, you know, pushing for a starting spot, whatever form he's in, really, for Tottenham. And... Having signed Richarlison and Dan Juma coming in on loan in January, that that's pushed him further down the pecking order. So this this is a player who's come onto the pitch to make a impact, and he's completely failed to do that because he puts in a stupid tackle on uh, James Tarkovsky, I think it was, and yeah, got himself sent off. And you know that that makes a, a huge difference because you look at Michael Keane's goal, and I mean. What an amazing strike. It, 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 I, I can completely see why the commentator, you know, made uh, comparisons to the goal that Vincent Company scored against Leicester a few seasons back. I, I would say it wasn't quite at the level, although if we're comparing the two goals, I think Michael Keane's was actually a cleaner strike because Company, although it's more impressive because I think it's maybe slightly further out and it goes right into the very, like, we're talking postage stamp area of the net. Tarkovsky's is definitely a cleaner strike, but there's no denying that. Uh, not Tarkovsky, Michael Keane. I don't know why I keep saying Tarkovsky. Michael Keane's is definitely um, a cleaner strike. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think our companies, though, is... is different because it can it wins man city the league that year but well in the end anyway uh, but this this could be an, a very important goal in its own right for everton by michael Keane. but the point i'm making is lucas moore having him on the pitch you know if if tottenham have got 11 men on the pitch is michael Keane afforded the time and space he is to get that shot off and 
you know, whack it into the top corner of the goal. And I mean, yeah, it is an amazing strike. Hugo Lloris doesn't even think about diving for it. That's how good it is. And do you know what the funny thing is? Before that, there, there was a moment where uh, a cross comes in and Michael Keane takes it off. Uh, I think it might have been tossed right off Tarkovsky's uh, foot as he's about to volley it towards goal. Or it might, no, I think it was Mikalenko who came on as sub. And I'm just thinking, um, if it, it's one of them games for Michael Keane. There's one moment in the first half where he does amazing to block a certain goal by Harry Kane. But then in, in the second half, he concedes the penalty. You know, a, 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 a ridiculous decision to try and get the ball in that situation. Because Romero isn't, isn't you know, strong on his left foot. He's not really in a high you know, quality chance taking position, if that is a phrase. Um, and and it just didn't seem to be his day, but what a goal. And that, that could be seismic in how Everton's season finish is, I, I think. And even to, after the goal in the six minutes of stoppage time right at the end of the game, Everton with a team pushing for the equaliser, not Tottenham. Tottenham, it, it was just... I don't think cowardly is the word, but it just it, it didn't seem f it, like a team that's full of belief in that they they can hold on to the leads. Like they were doing absolutely everything to, you know, let's just defend, let's not push forward, let's not play our natural game. So it, it, it was a strange decision. Uh, I, I don't know if... Uh, that, that was just something that the players had thought of between them or if, if it was something Stellini's asked them to do, but it just didn't work at all. And you could see it coming as well. You could see Everton getting an equaliser a mile off because they've done it a, a lot recently. They did it twice against Chelsea going behind twice. They did it uh, against Nottingham Forest too. So, you know, that, that Everton are a team who will fight back if you, and they will get an equaliser if you give them the chance to so it, it was it was a bizarre decision from Tottenham to go about the game the way they did after taking a one goal lead against a team who were down to 10 men so yeah I, I couldn't understand that uh, at all to be honest I, th I thought it was a ridiculous decision however one one uh, thing that was of uh, note tonight was uh, it is the first time I think the Premier League have done a scheduled break for players, uh, Muslim players, to you know break their fast for Ramadan. So, you know, I I'm all for being inclusive uh, in in football. So yeah, I I fair play, and it it's it's good to see. But uh, yeah, but um. Poor result for Tottenham in the end, I think, given the situation they were in with 20 minutes to go. And it is a big slash to their hopes of getting top four this season. But for Everton, um, I think as well, given the situation they were in with 20 minutes to go in the game, that's a huge point. And, you know, with how tight it is at the bottom... I think a going from a loss to a draw this season is even bigger this year than it ever, ever has been in the Premier League just because of how close it is at the bottom. There's eight or nine different teams right now who you think could easily get relegated. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.